How are we doing today, Fibers? So I'll try to be brief, but today we're going to go over our last topic in our series, You Better Work, and that's radical acceptance. And in terms of radical as in cool or groovy, it's not always going to seem that radical. You're going to want to stick around to the end of this video because there is a common misperception about radical acceptance. And if you know a little bit to nothing about radical acceptance, it might be a belief or a definition you hold or believe to be true. And you're going to want to find out if I can guess what that was. Otherwise, I'm going to talk a little bit about what radical acceptance is, how to know when you're doing it or not doing it. We'll talk about the Thriver size that I'd like you to go to the website and to complete. It's free. And otherwise, we love our early adopters. We appreciate the support so much. It means so much to us as a small channel. We'll never, ever, ever forget it. Again, we would like to take a moment to thank our Thriver Medallion members. Please remember that any free content that is moved to paid content, you can continue to enjoy for free, including any additional free programs we offer as a replacement. Your support means everything. For that reason, we would suggest new and returning viewers while you can hit the subscribe button and become an early adopter or Thriver Medallion member. No Patreon here, just perks. Hit subscribe using the various options available to you in YouTube. With that said, if you've seen this announcement before, please feel free to use the skip to topic or channel marker function in YouTube to get to the point. And remember that any persons or scenarios are anecdotal only in these videos and not meant to represent anyone's specific real persons or scenarios. As far as qualifications, we are not clinicians, therefore we cannot diagnose or provide treatment. We are not therapists, clinicians, psychologists, psychiatrists. We are professional life and happiness coaches. And for that reason, you can expect us to always theorize, never diagnose, and never theranose. A few more announcements. Please remember that like most content on this channel, you may only be able to assist yourself. And even then, you should only assist yourself before assisting others. You can go to thrivethematrix.com for terms of use and code of ethics including the TMM program. As life is full of emergencies, remember you always have access to using the tools reviewed on this channel. With that, we'd like to thank you for your attention. We predict clear skies, wish that for you today and always, regardless of the weather, and we would invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's topic. Welcome back, Thrivers. Let's talk a little bit about radical acceptance. So, radical acceptance was a concept that was originated by a psychologist named Marcia Lynham in 1993 and she engaged in a type of therapy called DBT and the point of that therapy was to raise the threshold for their ability to tolerate distress and one of the findings coming out of this is that the initial trauma or pain that we feel around certain events are not necessarily in the end what caused the suffering it's holding on to them and, and not using radical acceptance to look at them in the face as what they were and shelve them accordingly, right? So you may be experiencing more pain now by not adopting radical acceptance than you really did at the time of the event because it's the dwelling, it's the focusing and the rumination that inflicts suffering over time. So in the Thriver Size, part of what we're gonna do is practice the art of disengaging and when we say disengaging, we don't mean depersonalization. We don't mean checking out of reality. Uh, we just mean being able to take a step back and come to the conclusion and adopt the truth that what is, for the most part, not that we can't inspire positive change in the world, not that people can't take accountability for mistakes, but by and large, people are people and things are things. And reality is reality. So a big part of radical acceptance is really just meeting reality where it is. And that's really hard to do. If you were in a toxic relationship, toxic family system, toxic workplace for a job that you loved, there's also some grief that goes alongside that. Grief isn't just when you've lost a loved one. It's grieving over what could have been. Really, it's just dwelling on the woulda, coulda, shoulda's and mourning the fact that they are woulda, coulda, shoulda's, if that makes any sense. Probably tackle that topic in another video. Another aspect that we're going to look at in the Thriver Size is forgiveness. And we need to forgive two people, or maybe more, depending on our situation. Whoever wronged you, or if you're recovering from some sort of abuse, narcissistic abuse, dealing with a narcissist, you need to forgive that person 
Now, I'm not talking about a verbal face-to-face acknowledgement of forgiveness. I'm talking about a forgiveness in here. And that's not absolution, right? We're absolving them of their actions. Forgiveness gives you just the right amount of comfort to be able to look at something and identify that it's never going to change. This person is who they were based on what happened to them and their external stimuli and how they grew up just as how you are is made up of much of the same. So that forgiveness just kind of lightens the load and helps you ease into radical acceptance. I do want to pose a question. So I asked a family member or family members to name three unique quirks about you. Things really that anybody that takes enough time to get to know you would know. Can you guess what they would be? And if you can, if I asked you what the probability was that you'd be able to change them, what would that probability be? I bet you're thinking it's close to zero, unless there's some sort of incentive to do so. Well, I would ask, I think it begs the question, you know, if, if you're in a place where you're asking someone to change, you know, if you're not willing to change, they can't, then how reasonable is it to expect other people to change? Should some people change? Absolutely. Are they going to change? Most times, absolutely not. All part of radical acceptance. And forgive yourself as well. There's no shame in having engaged in good faith in any type of relationship. You should also forgive yourself and give yourself grace for things in your everyday life, especially if you are on a healing journey that is a roller coaster, probably the scariest one you've ever been on in your life. I, you know, coming out of some big life changes, scored a really nice, a huge job, and the future looked bright. Well, I found out that. I didn't know what I expected life to be like and it wasn't what I expected it to be like and I did better than I probably had any right to but I had some work I needed to do first and that wasn't the right opportunity at the right time. It would be very very easy to dwell on the fact that you know I could be in that position today but what's done is done and we have to accept that it's it's passed us by and we can only be you know forward looking. So I thought I'd provide a little example of, of a tough pill I've had to swallow when it comes to radical acceptance. So, thrivers, that's the concept of radical acceptance. Just facing reality as it is, not pursuing the coulda, woulda, shouldas, not nagging people to change, not saying that things will never get better for you, or nothing good will ever come your way, or no matter what I do, I'll never succeed. Those self-limiting beliefs are only going to hurt you, never help you. And even though it seems tough, radical acceptance, I think, can do the ex- exact opposite. So we're going to give you plenty of practice on what we talked about today in the Thriver Size. And I'll have a post up to the community page, maybe a YouTube short too, alerting that that's been posted to the website so you can complete it. I hope you are completing the Thriver Sizes. Let me know if you have any feedback. We do have an email address in our channel. And don't forget to hit subscribe if you like the content so you can become a Thriver Medallion member and and enjoy programs like this uh, for free when they become paid programs. Until we meet again, Thrivers. In the next program, happy healing and stay up. Now to answer that question that you asked, or that I asked in the beginning of the video more thoroughly. Some in the past have, or in my life, when we talk about acceptance of bad behavior, has taken it to mean co-signing that behavior is okay. That is not what radical acceptance is. It's actually knowing someone's behavior is not okay. It's not tolerable, but that it won't change. And so we can only bend ourselves around reality in a way that works for our healing and mental health. So it is not accepting someone's behavior as normal or okay. Is that what you thought heading into this video? If so, I hope I educated you a bit and the Thriver size does even more in regard to this.